You're listening to the Straits of Video Podcast with Rob Lane. All right, what is up? Hope you're doing awesome. And thank you as ever for choosing to listen to my Straight to Video podcast. This is episode 281 of the show, slowly but surely creeping to that milestone, episode 300, which is hard to believe. When I first started out, I just wanted to get into the double figures, but here we are. I need to figure out what I'm going to have for such an episode. So if you have any thoughts or ideas, please let me know. Right now, though, I'm excited to bring you a really fun chat I had with Yerky69, frontman of the Helsinki Vampires, better known as the 69 Eyes. Now, this is showing my age, but whenever I saw the band's logo or read their name, I always considered them one of the newer bands. These guys have been around since the late 80s, though, which is insane, and they're as busy and as popular as ever. Right now, they have a brand new single, which has just been released and is something special, yet very unexpected, as the new song, Fade to Grey, is written by none other than legendary hitmaker Diane Warren, composer of some of the biggest and greatest hits of the past five decades, including tracks for Starship, Aerosmith, Michael Bolton, Lady Gaga, and Taylor Swift, to name but a few. I doubt many had it on the cards, though, for it to pen a brand new song for a gothic rock and roll band. Fade to Grey is out now, and you'll hear from my chat with Yerky just how excited he is for this amazing collaboration. As always, the Straight to Video podcast is proudly presented to you in association with Affinity Photo, an incredible piece of photo editing software which I use all the time for graphic design. Affinity Photo is used to create the podcast episode art, what you see each week, and it's an extremely affordable alternative to other programs on the market. There's lots happening this week too with Affinity as they've just announced they're partnering with Canva, the hugely popular online design tool, so I'm sure there's going to be some exciting announcements coming soon, so please check them out at affinity.serif.com. All right, let's dive into this week's conversation. As you'll hear, I really didn't have to do much in this interview. Right from the start, Yerky was off and running with his excitement for the new single Fade to Grey, which you can listen to now wherever you get your music or just visit 69eyes.com. But right now, please enjoy my straight-to-video chat with Yerky69 of the 69 Eyes. Right, how are you doing, sir? Yucky, how's it going? It's jolly exciting. Excellent stuff. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. How are you, man? All right. Oh, yeah. Feels like we're releasing, like the 69 Eyes is releasing an album or something. So it's exciting just to release one song. But the feeling is exactly the same. Yeah, just the anticipation and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and happiness and excitement, actually, of people around who are into our music or even journalists. So it's a different experience. We released an album a year ago and we've released so many albums over the years. But one thing what you forget every time you're about to release an album, all of a sudden you realize, hold on, there's going to be some criticism. Namely, a critic will you know, write a review of the album. And I forget all about that. You don't remember that when you're happy making the record. And then at some point it hits you and hold on. Oh no, they're going to probably, I don't know, they might say something. But this time around, I'm not worried at all. You've been doing it long enough. You're bulletproof nowadays. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we're releasing this one song, particularly song which been written by the, you know, legend, one of the best songwriters alive in this world. So I'm not worried at all, like what the critics say. In a world of musical collaborations, I don't think many people would have the team up of the 69 Eyes legendary goth rock and roll band with incredible hit maker Diane Warren on the cards with the new song Fade to Grey. Yeah, that's something like, you know, our band has been playing eternally. Helsinki Vampires, it's not a just like a cool gimmick that we have. It has become reality. So what's left for us, like I earlier said, we released a year ago a new album, which was our 13th, <laughs> one three. And I told in all these interviews back then that I don't really like to say how many records we have released because it's the same as if I was in a pub and I met a beautiful lady and the lady didn't know who I am and I told the lady that yes I'm a singer in a rock and roll band I wouldn't say like we released 13 albums that would be embarrassing you know <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it it wouldn't be cool you know it wouldn't be like, like a cool pickup line like hey babe we released 13 albums 
<laughs> so I, I sort of tried to avoid that last year when that 30th album came out. Just talking about the here and now, that's what you do. You focus on what's happening right now. Exactly. And that's the focus of the 69 eyes always. We always live in this present. And I think it's our image and the sound, which go hand in hand. I spoke about it, but I mean, I think it's really become true as well. We managed to release like timeless music. We existed four decades starting in the 80s. That is insane. That's insane. But if you listen to our records from 20 years ago, they don't have the particular, you know, soundscape of early 2000s. I always think of you as a new band, though. That's weird. Maybe that's my age showing. It's like, oh, the 69 Eyes, they're one of the new bands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I've been learning every decade. Like, oh, hey, there are new guys. So just going to the answer to your question slowly, we have all these records out. We can play around the world if we want. And tomorrow I'm flying to the States and we're starting American tour. So what's left there for us? I mean, obviously, we're ambitious and hungry and haven't done everything yet, but sort of we have. So wouldn't it be nice to have a chance to cooperate with somebody like Diane Warren, for instance, to release that quality of music and see what happens? Does it bring anything for us? Because the 14th album, whenever it comes out, I'm not sure what to expect from that. I mean, do we really have to do that? Is this worth doing? Life is worth living. Everything's fantastic. Rock and roll is always fantastic to do. And we don't calculate anything. And we, we've just been rocking. But I mean, obviously, new things are inspiring. So it's interesting to team up with such a legendary songwriter. And it's also like really beautiful because she's written all these hits that made this world where we live now. I mean, without her songs, there's so many of her songs that I don't know how this world could be like what it is right now. We're a similar age. You're a little bit older than me, but we're, we grew up around a similar yeah. time. I mean, yeah. along with like Desmond Child, Diane Warren was like, she ruled the radio back then. And she's doing it still, you know, I think she's been writing to Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga. And also like if you watch the Oscar gala two weeks ago, she was there, you know, nominated for the best song. Like she's still creating incredible music. But those hits that we know her of created this world where we live. So it's uh, incredible to have a chance to have her song. And the beauty of it is, it's like her hits. And in this case, this song, as the 69 Eyes has recorded, are written by one single person. Yes. There's these hits that are around us these days. I love hits and I love any contemporary music during my lifetime. And I really love them. But, you know, they are written by like Miley Cyrus or all these guys. They have fantastic music and I'm a fan. But those songs are written by somewhat like 10 persons. It's almost like films as well. Films have so many people kind of wanting to dive in on it. Yeah, exactly. But now there's this new song by The 69 Eyes and it's written by Diane Warren. Not like 10 people. So that's the beauty of it. And also it's from her mastermind. And also there's the magic in her songs, which I learned later on. You know, there's a lot of like really cool documentary and interviews and stuff of her. So there's been saying that many of her artists, when they get her song, they are surprised. Like, how come you can write straight up about my life, current situation? And for me, this song, when I get it, it was exactly straight from my life. It's like a relationship song, when sad love song, when somebody goes away, your life turns to black and white and fades to gray. And I was like, how did you know? So she's really magical person. And this goes on for all her songs. That's why these songs connect with people. They feel like it's written for them. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm singing about my own life, but she wrote it. I don't know how she did that. How was it presented to you originally? Was it just piano and vocal? Oh, yeah. So the story goes on. Can I tell you the story? Absolutely. The story is crazy. You know, I think the only place even today, 2024, which is still happening in the rock and roll world is Hollywood. And seriously, it's that old Sunset Strip. There's still some weird magic when you go there. Even though it's a lot of hotels now, there's still some magic. Exactly. There's Rainbow Bar and Krill, Whiskey A Go Go, Roxy, Wiper Room. That's all you need, as long as they're still there. I mean, there is no such a place anywhere in the world anymore. You know, like Soho is long gone. Though I heard the ship, that pub is like uh, blooming. 
But again, after a decade, but still, if you want to somehow connect with the rock and roll world, there's uh, some chance to do that on Sunset Strip. So I go there just to get inspiration or meet friends or make new friends once a while when I have time. One of these trips exactly two years ago, I was there and it was just right after the COVID times. It was so exciting to travel again. I was in Beverly Hills and there's Rodeo Tribe, this high-end fashion street. So I was there just going from high-end fashion stores. Like I approach them like they're like art exhibitions at their best. I mean, there's always something exciting. The people, the products... I'm into fashion, so I like to go there. I went to one of the tiny stores and I didn't pay attention, but there happened to be a bunch of sort of Beverly Hills ladies. And I was dressed up pretty freakily. Freakily for Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was underdressed. I was supposed to go to Venice Beach. So I was dressed up in a 70s flare jeans and, you know, I have this long hair and like a hippie clothes that I was thinking of wearing. But I didn't go there, so I, I ended up going to Rodeo Drive. But I was just bravely going from shop to another. And then these ladies stopped me because I looked so freaky. Just said that I'm in a rock and roll band. And one of the ladies introduced that she's a songwriter. They wanted my information. I think I looked so freaky and weird and tell more about like the band that I was in. But I was just minding my own business and sort of left that situation open. I just mentioned the name of the band and check out from the Google and something like that. You didn't say 13 albums or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't say that. <laughs> So anyway, I just left the situation and like right after I hit the street and walked a couple of blocks away, I just realized that, hold on, one of these ladies said that she was a songwriter. So hold on. Then I just realized, holy shit, that was Diane fucking Warren. I fucked it up because, you know, these are the situations why you go to Hollywood in general and to, you know, mingle and meet cool people and maybe later on come back to them and suggest like uh, writing music or touring or whatever that connection is. And I fucked it up completely. Then I was like, how is this possible? When that happened, kind of thing happened, which I was sort of like why I went there originally and have been dreaming of all my life being in the 69 eyes that we will meet some people that we can always we meet and we will connect or I connect. But it was one of those magical moments that I've read about and we read about when there's a story of some actors or something that some director discovers somebody on the street and so on. Though I'm in the tender age of 50 plus I'm still, you know, love to believe in those Hollywood stories. And you went and missed it. You missed that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had one finally. It's real. Those fantasy stories are real, but I fucked it up. <laughs> so for a year, wherever I looked, Diane Warren's name popped up. Then like a year later... I was watching the Oscar gala again, and she was playing there uh, like a grand piano in white suit. And I was watching at home and I was like, I've met this person, but I missed the opportunity of even saying that would be pretty cool to do some cooperations or musical cooperation in the future. That was really hurting. So one of the nights after that, like exactly a year ago, Iggy Pop released an album a year ago and I was watching there. There's a making of that album in, in YouTube and I was watching that. And, you know, like once you're finished, whatever you're watching on YouTube, YouTube like sort of gives you something else. It sees into your soul. It knows exactly what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So after the Iggy thing was over, there was like the cult painted on my heart music video, wow. which is by Diane Warren, which is maybe my favorite cult song because it's on the Gone in 60 Seconds soundtrack and, and the song is nowhere to be found and when it came out i bought it as a cd single and i listened to it my portable walkmans over and over it's just one song because it's so fucking great and i was waiting for some new music from the cult as well and and then comes this song so i'm brainwashed by that song how great it is back then and then YouTube gives it out and I was like, holy shit, that's Diane Warren's song and just reminds me again of her. And then after that, there was Aerosmith doing the same song. Oh, man. Like the demo of that it's... same song. 
That's I didn't know that exists. I didn't know that Aerosmith tried to do the same song. So then I was like, this is interesting. So I thought that what if I try to contact her, Diane Warren, because this is a sign. So I sent her like bravely a message and said, I'm a big fan. And we actually met a year ago. And I didn't know that Aerosmith has done this demo version of Pain in My Heart, which is your favorite song of mine. And she, strangely enough, she actually replied. I said like, yeah, I remember we just recently met. And I started a small talk quickly, like, oh, what about musical collaboration? And now, year after, we have this song coming out. So it took two years after meeting her to have this song out. And she asked me, would you be interested in power ballad, like, I don't want to miss a thing kind of way? And what do you answer for that? It's like, uh, uh, yeah, yes, please. <laughs> I'll take anything you've got. Bring it on. Then I got the demo of Fade to Cray. And like you said, it's a piano, classical Diane Warren's music. She plays piano and she sings it. And then we arrange the song to the format like it is right now. And I think it sounds like the 69 but it's also very recognizable Diane Warren song as well. What does she think of your version? So let me tell you, we did this and we arranged it and I wanted to keep it fresh how we do it. So how I told the story, it's exactly how it is. It's from her to us, how we've been communicating. So actually, I've been flying back and forward a few times to LA, to Hollywood, to play her our version if she, you know, like approves it. So I wanted to keep it seriously like this. I just wanted to communicate straight with her about the song. So she was there while we were arranging it and from the early steps. So actually, we sort of recorded this song. It took a year to record. Seriously, we've done it so many times, all these parts. There's also like a string orchestra, which is real on the song. That must have been goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We actually really spent a year for recording, mixing, arranging and all that for this song. I love that. Is the cult song your favourite Diane Warren song or do you have a favourite one of her others, such as uh, Rhythm of the Night is one of my all-time favourite pop songs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you check out the list of the songs that she has written, I love them all. Yeah. But, I mean, you could just put on Written by Diane Warren for your streaming service and played all night. Yeah. It will be a fantastic night. All the songs are very different and how remarkable those songs have been, at least in my life. Cher, Aerosmith, Starship. Incredible. I really love the Lady Gaga movie song she did with her. That's also like, it's one of the, my favorite Lady Gaga songs. And obviously, I don't know if you even know, but some of her songs are also on, on the soundtrack of A Star Is Born by Lady Gaga. So, so she, there's so much incredible songs she's written. So this is the ultimate honor and also like unexpected, you know, goal yeah. to become reality for the 69 for this 35-year-old rock and roll band who still exactly. believe in leather jackets and sunglasses and black hair and boots. Dude, you never know what's around the corner. You never know what's going to come up in the future. Yeah, but we're doing this for, you know, for all these other legends like Johnny Thunders and, you know, Eddie Cochran, Gene Winsen, Lil Richard, Elvis. We're continuing the tradition just trying to do the best we can. Yeki, before I um, let you go, I want to ask, films such as The Lost Boys and The Crow have influenced some of your early material. What are your thoughts on the new Crow film now the trailer is out there? Well, that's a really nice question. I've seen the trailer and obviously it looks good. It's going to be extremely violent, seems like that. Violence seems to be kind of trendy these days if you think of like John Wick absolutely yeah you know or Equalizer yes the last Equalizer it was actually a little bit too brutal to my taste to be honest it looks good nice poster nice images and I think it captures and brings something for a younger audience who doesn't dwell in the past but I mean, it doesn't also wipe away the memory of the classic and Brandon Lee, just like repeating the legend of the crow by its own way. Though I have to say that the main actor has done some excellent roles already. Skarsgård, yeah. Yeah, so it would be weird to think that it is the crow, if you know what I mean, but... That's how it is. I mean, but it's a cool gothic movie. Was you a fan of the comic book as well? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I was there since the early issues. 
back then. It was mysterious also as a comic. Yes. The movie is very mysterious. But not only Brandon Lee, but the other characters in the original movie are incredible. The villains, the main kingpin and his girlfriend. So I hope this movie has also other notable characters because that was the magic of the crow. It's not just Brandon Lee, Eric Traven, who's the main thing there. There's other characters image-wise very strong. Yeah, by far the trailer hasn't introduced very colorful, you know, other characters than Eric Traven. So let's see. Hopefully it's holding some back for us. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, but I mean, this is a question I've been waiting for all these decades and I'm happy to talk about it. So it's all good, you know. Wonderful, man. Yerky, I appreciate you taking some time to talk with me. Have a, an amazing time on the US tour. Yeah, and I hope we can hit UK venues at some point as well very soon. We're planning something for the fall, so I hope to see you guys then. That would be fantastic. Halloween is pretty near, after all. All right, man, you enjoy the rest of your day. Good luck with the new single, and hopefully see you next time. Pleasure. Pleasure, sir. Cheers. Massive thanks to Yerky of the 69 Eyes for chatting with me on the Straight to Video podcast. The band are currently out on tour in the USA and the new single, Fade to Greg, written with Diane Warren, is available now. All info on the song and tour dates can be found at 69eyes.com. Now, I've been teasing a few things to do with our 80s video shop over in Alfton, Derbyshire the past few episodes. There's going to be some big changes soon and we're almost set to announce those. So please, if you can, follow the shop on all social media at 80s Video Shop. Chris and I really appreciate the love and support for this project along with Chris's film One Night Rental which the DVD and Blu-ray is available to buy now from www.80svideoshop.co.uk and some of the reviews it's been getting have blown everyone away so again thank you for the love and support of that one too so that's all for this week's podcast but I'll be back for a brand new episode next Friday so until then make sure to always be kind please rewind and unwind and I'll speak to you all real soon <laughs>